Namaste, Shubhasayam, a warm welcome to all our friends who have joined us from across the globe for this session. As you are all aware, Indica Yoga is a platform that aspires to offer authentic, immersive and transformative yoga experiences across the world, which includes festivals, workshops, courses and many other formats. So this is the second edition of the Global Festival of Yoga. It started two days ago and we are on the third day of this festival. And in this year, we are specially focusing on three themes, but even there, the core theme is healing. As we understand today, that is what the world requires. So what is this healing? The concepts of healing, health are all very closely connected. And in this session, we are going to exp explore these uh, understandings from a yogic perspective. And for that, we have with us one of our mentors, Sri Raghuramji. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Anuradha Chaudhary, who is an assistant professor at Department of Humanities and Social Sciences in IIT Khadakpur to introduce our guest and also anchor the session. Over to you, Anuji. Thank you very much, Vinaya, and uh, Sadar Pranam to Raghuramji. Introducing Raghuramji is uh, like a daughter having the privilege of introducing her father. And Raghuramji is the spiritual father of many across the world who look forward to his presence whenever he visits uh, the different countries. His presence, his warm presence, his uh, witty, wise presence. And um, everybody is always enriched by whatever he has to say based on his vast knowledge of the Shastras and his personal experience because he has been a practitioner of yoga from a very young age. And um, he then went on to found uh, the Yoga Bharati, which is a, a spiritual organization, international spiritual organization. He's also the international ambassador of S. Vyasa itself. But I will uh, let you all discover much more of Raghuramji. He left a legacy last time through his lectures and people are still falling back on it and finding a lot of their own uh, responses to their questions. So Raghuramji, with these few words, we look forward to another very illuminating session on what healing is really all about. So thank you very much and uh, Asadar Pranam again. Thank you, Anu. Very beautiful way introduced, particularly we just crossed this Father's Day and on that occasion it was so nice to listen to you from you, that kind of thing. Thank you so much and Namaste Pranam to everybody. Thank you Vinay for making this opportunity and this uh, global festival is something which is very unique and I'm so happy about to be part of this global festival. And uh, yeah, healing, according to the Indian philosophy, there is one thing that I would like to say is that when people talk about integration, integration of various modalities, like for example, Ayurveda, Allopathy, Yunani, Siddha, this, that kind of thing. But very important thing that we need to understand is that this is actually yoga that looks at human being is an integrated way. Why it is like that is human being is not just only physical body and problem, suffering and healing is not only belonging to physical body, but he's a spectrum all the way right from the gross physical body to the consciousness. And he's an extraordinary, wonderful spectrum. And actually, when we think of healing, healing is at all these levels that we think of. So I will uh, share my... Uh, PowerPoint, so that I will explain from that point of view. Yes, healing, an integral process in yoga. Yoga itself has to be an integral process, and then particularly healing must be an integral process. And integration in IAYT, that means integrated approach of yoga therapy, does not mean to integrate various therapies. But it's a practice where human being is taken as an integrated, namely human being is considered as not just on the physical body, but he is a 
body mind consciousness complex and this is what is unique thinking about the indian philosophy sanatana dharma right from the 10000 years this concept has been prevail prevailing in them and working in that direction all the time so this is nothing that we are inventing whatever that our sages have contributed we are passing on that information and because the body itself is integration therefore the problems are also at integration level so from body mind to consciousness continuum and uh, healing is very important because the world health organization wanted to change the focus of health from sickness to wellness and that's why they said health is not just mere absence of sickness but it's a state of well being at the physical mental social spiritual levels at all these levels that's what they thought that we need to address wonderful thing is that they have given this particular idea saying that it's not sickness it's not absence of sickness it's a physical well being at positive level at physical well being mental well being social and the spiritual well being unfortunately though the definition is so lofty the management stops at the very first level they have doctors who manage the health only for the sickness in fact a friend of mine who is a medical doctor i just go to see him he asked me how are you doing i said fine then immediately he says if you are fine then why are you wasting your time and my time if i have if you have sickness then i have something to offer so naturally the whole purpose of him is not for me it's for the sickness if i have acid problem he gives me antacid if i give the if i have the bacteria problem he gives me antibiotic to fight the bacteria so his whole focus is on the sickness this what i'm not i'm saying american medical journal said about this particular thing that medical management grossly short of the purpose for which that health has been uh, defined and one thing system which can introduce at all these personality level which can help us is something which is yoga because yoga is not just only physical level but all, all these levels so we need to understand yoga from its totalistic perspective that's what i'm trying to say about that <coughs> now one thing about it is basically it is for the human being for a long period of time the modern medicine looked at human being at the physical personality level only sigmund freud came onto the scene and then first time they said it's not only physical but he's also mind so physical is supposed to be soma mind is psyche so psychosomatic this is what they were talking even the latest medicine is also about mind body medicine but they have not yet even gone to the level of consciousness when this way that they had a problem they were struggling at that level indian philosophy looked at the whole human being at the five personality level how was it possible for them it is possible because of the method of inquiry the modern science looked at the human being from outside then naturally when i look at the human being from outside i only see the physical body and i think that there is mind and that's what we assume and then we try to work with that but indian philosophy looked at five levels because their uh, approach is not from external but it is from inside but another thing is that i cannot go to anybody from inside i can only understand myself from inside therefore it is called as the atma pariksha or self enquiry when you look into yourself you will reveal that you are not just only physical body it is just only outer cover and very simple thing is that in order for this physical body to function we need to have life force behind it and that's what they call it as prana actually roughly translated as life force but then prana is much more than that so prana is responsible for my hands to move prana is responsible for my walking my talking and you are hearing so all these things are because of prana so therefore that we are not just only physical body but we are much deeper than that we are prana and we also say that you know normally we say my hand that means hand is a tool in my hand with me and then i operate this tool with the help of prana so therefore i am the prana behind it this is how the student and teacher discussion goes on in taitra upanishad the teacher says find out further you are not only prana but something which is subtler deeper very simple thing is that it's not just only physical body and prana 
but we are the mind as long as the mind is there we are there mind is not there we are not there many times it happens like that you are in the traffic but mind is somewhere else and you didn't see what's happening in front of you you are walking in the shopping complex somebody greets you you did not even look at him because your attention was mind was somewhere else so therefore what are you though these gross level physical body is there prana is also there but we are the mental personality therefore mano brahmeti vyajanat manaso keva kalvimani bhutani jayante like that he says that i am the mental personality but then you are not the mind there is something which is deeper than that that's why the teacher says to the student try to find out further inquire into yourself further you can go to a greater truths it's not very simple, difficult because something which is operating all these things seem to be the intellect and we are the intellect it is because of the intellect only today we see that all this technology development all this growth that has taken place everything is because of the intellect so therefore i am the intellectual personality that's what is vijnana my kosha vijnanam brahmeti vyajana vijnana dheva khalu iman bhuta ni jayante i am that vijnana my kosha so wonderful in fact it looks so clear how beautiful that is we can understand that we are the intellectual personality not only that we identify ourselves with that intellect but the teacher says find out further that means you are not the intellect you are something which is deeper than that how can there be something which is deeper than the intellect because intellect seem to be everything how can there be anything deeper than intellect we identify ourselves with intellect whatever the training of the intellect is there that's what we are like i am a doctor because my intellect is trained in medicine i am an engineer if it is trained in engineering i am a lawyer if it is trained to I mean lawyer it's like that whatever that we are trained in the intellect that's what we identify ourselves with but then the teacher says find out further how can there be anything greater than intellect in fact most of the world thinkers whether it is karl marx confucius schopenhauer or all these people aristotle they stopped at the level of intellect and it's only the indian philosophy upanishad knowledge goes further beyond the level of intellect shankaracharya comments on that saying that you are somebody who is behind the level of intellect and once you try to understand from the scripture then you see that how simple it is it's there in your own experience because all that what uh, shastra is about the experience and your own experience shows that you are not intellect you are somebody subtler deeper than intellect how many times intellect intellect is only an advisory capacity many times intellect only gives an advice but to follow the intellect in advice or not is left to you see intellect can only give an advice but who follows you are supposed to follow it but you might not follow intellect says something which is not good but then you still go behind it why do you go while i was working as an engineer long time ago i had a colleague of mine a brilliant engineer brilliant means high degree of vijnana my kosha and he could solve any problem and he was smoking and he was a habit of he had a habit of smoking i told him that look you know smoking is bad for health and you are a role model for every engineer why do you smoke particularly engineers are very good when you tell them in the statistical numbers so i tried to convince him smoking is bad by saying that the medical reports say that 58% of lung cancers are because of smoking therefore you are in the high risk range of cancer he said raguram 58% is the earlier statistics latest revised statistics show it is 72% that means he corrects my intellect and he goes for smoking see that means intellect is like the way that on the television screen or something like that cigarette packs they say smoking is injurious for health it's all nothing beyond that our intellect also is like that but we are somebody who is the decision maker intellect does not make a decision for us we are the decision makers you are the decision maker for yourself who is that who decides whether i should smoke or not you don't have to break your head this friend of mine himself answered one day he 
got irritated because four or five times that when I was advising, don't smoke. He got irritated. He said, Aguram, you advise me all the time not to smoke. Have you ever smoked? I never faced that question. Nobody asked that question. I have taken it back. And then said, no, I never smoked. Immediately, he had his upper head. He said, you are advising me not to smoke because you don't know the joy of smoking. See, that clearly shows that what guides him is the ananda, joy, bliss. Ananda theva khali imani bhutani jayante. We do every activity because of the ananda. So, khame valabdha karoti. When there is ananda, then we do it. So, it's the ananda which is guiding us. Nobody else is guiding us. We are guiding ourselves. But then even then, the student is still adamant. He says that my happiness comes from outside. But you say that you are the happiness inside. How do you say that? For that, Upanishad offers a very simple test. Look at yourself in the sleep, deep sleep state. What happened to you? Absolutely, there is nothing which is coming to you from outside. But you really enjoy sleep. You're blissful. We all admit that six, seven hours that we sleep every night. Systematically, seriously and religiously we go to sleep. And then we enjoy that sleep. If somebody who has greater stamina can also manage 10-15 hours. But what is that content of the sleep? And your blissful mind become quiet. You transcended the mind. No senses, no objects from outside is giving you happiness. In fact, any object at that time only can disturb your happiness, your blissful state. Deep inside, you are touching your nature called as bliss. This is what the student says that finds out his nature is bliss. And that's what is the spiritual state of us. The moment he finds that out, he never came back to the teacher. Not only that, the Upanishad says that whoever finds out his nature is bliss, he will never he will be always established in that blissful state. Saya evam veda pratitishtati. Yes, it's so simple. Analysis is not difficult. And these five different personalities, they are not watertight compartments. They are, they are together here in the same personality, one merging into the other. At the grossest level, this is Annamaya Kosha, physical body. At the subtlest level, we are the blissful personality. We are bliss. Yes, it's simple to understand. But if you understand that, it's very diff it's dangerous. What is the danger? In this creation of God, everything is according to its nature. <coughs> Excepting the most wonderful creation of God, the human being. Nature is happiness, perpetually unhappy. You ask him, are you happy? Well, I have applied for a vacation. Once I go, then I'll be happy. Are, are you happy particularly today? Yeah, looks like that lockdown condition will be lifted. Then I will be happy. Everybody is away from the happiness. At every personality level, we are away from our nature called happiness. That's what basically the way that yoga enters into the picture. Look at this table. In the third column, fourth column, it says that at the physical level, to be relaxed was our nature. Look at every child relaxed. Walks relaxed, runs relaxed, falls relaxed. There is no tension at all. As we, we were also like that when we were children. But as we have grown up, tension is the way we have come away from our nature. So tension is coming out of our nature. Relaxation was our nature. Similarly, at the prana level, life force level, our nature was to be slow. Look at the children. They are always slow. They are never in a hurry. In fact, I keep telling, I keep hearing many times in the shopping mall, mothers will be shouting at the children, walk fast. And every child says, yeah, I'm coming. But then no sign of coming. You put him in the bathtub, he doesn't come out. Slow. Bring him out, pull him out, and then put him in the closet, and then he's buried in the closet. He never comes out. Put him small full of food, he'll be bunching it for about 10 minutes. Everything is slow. You are in a hurry, not the child. We were also like that slow. As we have grown up, speed is the way that we come away from our nature. At the mind level, calm state of mind was our nature. Everybody, every child is calm. Absolutely. No worry at all. No agitations, no disturbances. Child is calm. We were also like that. 
But as we have grown up, we are worried. Small little simple things, we are worried, agitated. Agitation is a worry. Necessary and necessary, we keep worrying. If you don't have anything to worry, we sit down and worry. Am I missing something? Am I forgetting something? You know, that becomes like a worry. You know, at our center that people come to me for yoga counseling, husband and wife came to me, middle-aged. Initially, both of them together, they talked to me for 10 minutes. Afterwards, wife told husband, you please go out. I want to talk to Raghuram personally. Husband fellow went out. The wife's complaint to me was that uh, Raghuram Ji, you know, my main worry is my husband doesn't worry. He doesn't worry, that becomes your worry. Ha. Agitation. Just the way we have come away from our nature. At the intellect level, wrong notions, confusions, right and wrong, this is okay, not okay. I mean, how many kind of fixations we have created at the intellect level? Therefore, we are away from our wisdom. At the emotion level, an emotional imbalance is the way that we have come away from our nature. As a result of it, deep inside at the bliss level, our nature was to be in harmony. Not only our nature, look at the whole nature. So much harmony there in the nature. You look at the plant, roots in the soil and the flowers and the foliage in the sky, they are in such wonderful harmony. The flowers do not know where they get the rasa from. But then the roots do not know where they are supplying. But then there is such wonderful harmony. Look at an orange, the bitter seed inside and the wonderful fruit. They are born together, grow to the fullness together, but they are in such wonderful harmony. The seed will not disturb the fruit. Fruit will not disturb the seed. That's what is the health of the plant, that fruit. That harmony, that's how is whole nature that there is this harmony. And you are also part of the nature. So you have that harmony too. You are the harmony too. Look at the children. They have such wonderful harmony. When they are tired, they go to sleep. When they are hungry, they take food. Simplest harmony they could think of. Whereas, as we have grown up, we have come away from that harmony to disharmony. We are tired. We want to sleep. Lie down on the bed. Make all the efforts. But then sleep will not happen. Insomnia. We suffer from that. Did you sleep well? No, I couldn't sleep. Why? Because this harmony is lost. So much that we far away from our nature. Bliss is our nature. And a simple sign of bliss is to have a smile on the face. And we are so far away that today the cameraman has to keep the camera ready and make a request to us, please smile. And the other day somebody was saying that, you know, how long should we smile? They click it fast. As if we are smiling, is we are doing a favor to somebody else. How unfortunate it is. So therefore, basically, that the whole idea is to see that we'll go back to our nature. That's what is yoga. So the sickness is tension, speed, agitation, confusion, imbalances. And the remedy for that is go back to relaxation, slowness, calmness. And a conscious process of relaxation is the asanas at the body level. Conscious process of slowing down the prana is the pranayama. That's what is the very definition of pranayama. Shwasa prachwasa yor gatir vicheda pranayama. Gati means speed. Vicheda, cut down the speed. A conscious process of calming the mind is meditation. At the end of meditation, if you are feeling that, how long should I meditate? then you are not really meditating. You should come out calm state of mind. Similarly, Jnana Yoga is to see that you develop the wisdom, remove confusions from your mind. Emotional imbalances you conquer with the help of Bhakti Yoga. Then ultimately, you are going back to your nature called as harmony within. That's what is the health. At all these personality levels, Yoga will take you back to your health. This is the healing process. And your own nature itself is health. Your own nature itself is healing. And healing does not come from outside. Healing is your own nature. In fact, that's why you see the very simple idea that if you have a broken bone, the orthopedician put the bones together 
and then put a plaster and say that don't disturb that for the next six weeks or eight weeks so that healing takes place. No doctor says that he is healing. You are healing yourself. Everywhere it is the healing is there within us. And healing from that health comes. So health is not a word outside this word called healing. And this is exactly what Indian philosophy also says. Your own nature itself is health. That's why the words in Sanskrit for the health is called as the swastha. Swa means self, sta means being. When I'm in myself, when I'm being in the state of myself, that's what is the health. Huh? When I'm away from myself, that's what is the sickness. And to be in yourself, you don't require any reason. To be in yourself, it's natural. Whereas to go away from your nature, yes, you require a reason. You require a reason when you go away from your nature. When you are in your nature, you don't require any reason. I mean, I'm not saying any extraordinary thing. I mean, this is what is there in England, Sanatan Dharma, but I'm not saying anything extraordinary. When you meet somebody on the and then after a long time, he says, how are you doing? And that person says, I'm fine. You don't say, oh my God, why are you fine? <laughs> to be fine is our own nature. It does not require any reason. Huh? Sickness has to have a reason. Like, yeah, I'm running temperature cold or something. Oh, you got wet in the rain. So that means to say there is a reason for you are getting that. Sickness. Sickness has to have a reason. Health does not require any reason. Health is your own nature. Mullana Siddhan I met and then he asked, how are you, Raghuram? I said, I have terrible headache. He asked me, why do you have a headache? I said, look, you are talking to me. There itself is a cause. So sickness has to have a cause. Health does not require any cause. And yoga is something which will take you back to your health. No other, no other means from outside. It is your own process of methods of yoga will take you back to yourself. Therefore, if health is the core, healing is the core, and that core of you is also, as I said, ananda, bliss. So health, bliss, and your own nature. Also, there is one more thing, that's what is the freedom, which is there in your core. And when you come away from that core, Yoga is the one which will bring you back to your nature. So that's what is the purpose of yoga. That's what is the definition of yoga. Patanjali gives the definition. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha tatha drashtu swarupe avasthanam. Then the practitioner will go back to swarupa. So therefore that yoga is a lifestyle. It is not just only that what you do on a mat, but it's a whole lifestyle. So many different things that are there. And the food that there is a way of yoga, the way that you interact with the people, there is a way of yoga. And activities that you do, there is yoga. So therefore, if you bring in yoga at all these personality level, it will help you to go back to your nature called healing. Particularly today, with all these changed conditions, we really require that healing. And that healing Start getting what all things that are away from you. See that, you could, that if a dog's stomach is upset, dog. Uh, Raghuramji, can you hear us?
there seems to be a, a technical glitch i think he's connecting back shortly yes sorry for this small uh, disturbance we'll just wait for raghuram ji to come back in the meanwhile i'll just take the opportunity to tell you that if you have any questions please put them in the q and a box and then raghuram ji will answer a few at the end raghuram ji your sound we've lost your sound uh, as in your mic is off we lost you a little bit in the middle right yes for about a minute or so your your mic is again got switched off yes thank you for we also the yes i think that's fine yes raghuram ji right okay i'm sorry for that something technical <laughs> no <laughs> hmm. so therefore basically when we have come away from our nature further then the natural techniques natural ideas this is what is the combination of all this naturopathy techniques which will help us to go back if we have gone further away from our nature then our indian culture said that there are natural substances and natural substance combinations that's what is the ayurveda ayurveda is nothing unnatural these are the herbs these are the various uh, idea which is there are way various plants and all that combination of that in a particular way is the thing which is going which is having a healing ability so that what happens is that we give ayurveda so that we come closer to our nature once you come closer to our nature then we switch over from ayurveda to yoga so that because yoga is no external intervention ayurveda is still external intervention but that's only the natural substances that we give after that if you have further gone away and then we have chemical substances even our earlier times also this chemical substances were not there but then but there but then they were not so much as today the whole of modern medicine is nothing but chemicals <coughs> and we give that chemicals to see that how you get back to your nature we are not against that the idea is that yes they give a quick remedy for you to come closer to yourself then you get back to your nature many times you see that when people are having the too much of anxiety we give some pills of anxiety that's modern medicine and then anxiety levels are low then we make them to do yoga pranayama and all those things so that they will come back to the normal case so it is not the question of that either or but it is the question of that how we understand in a combination put all those things when you go further beyond then the way that we try to do is either they destroy the portion which is supposed to be affected or remove the portion by surgery that's what is surgery in chemo so therefore when you look at it just picture it's very clear very understandable and then when we see that from the health from our health point of view when you look at it yoga will be the first remedy that you seek to get back to your nature and then modern medicine can be the last thing beyond that there's only surgery but today many times people do not know about that the first thing is somebody goes with a back pain immediately the doctor says yes you need to go undergo surgery the moment he hear the name of surgery and that person becomes really alert and said can be anything else then yeah some physiotherapy some this thing massage and finally he talks about yoga but yoga and we have seen in our center that 80% of the cases where the doctors very clearly said that you have to undergo surgery and we didn't have to do the surgery yoga could help them so this is what the wonderful healing power of yoga but then it is not just only the practice of your asanas in fact that's what many people have a wrong notion saying that is this asana good for that give in fact some very learned person he asked me that suggest me three asanas for my problem you know i have hypertension i have back pain don't give me more than that because i am a busy executive it's not like pills that it can work it's something that your lifestyle we need to understand that so that's how we can go back to our nature with the help of yoga all these things can be understood and this is what our indian philosophy has said that about sickness is aswastha swastha means being in self that's what is the health 
as well as the being away from our nature that what is sickness health is our own nature and there are when we go back to and the whole healing is to go back to our nature and how we go away from our nature it can affect us one time that we go away from our for some reason or the other it happens to us that we go away from our nature that can be like an incident like for example i have really hard time i my activity has been so vast and this so tiring therefore that my system goes away from my nature that's an incident and then a situation that has in the table that i have given the tension speed agitation these are all the things which are like an incident that happened but then when you repeatedly do that day after day after day that it happens and that's what it becomes like vasana abhyasa my tension becomes my vasana my tension becomes my habit my speed becomes my habit habituated to be speed have simple things that can become habit like for example people who are living in the city with all the sounds around that they speak loud because that is how people and this listen to and when two of my friends they came to our center prashant which is a very quiet place and there one is talking to the other the other person says why are you shouting <laughs> we are used to that see high voice is also a habit that we have formulated like that how many habits that we have we have accustomed ourselves with when this habit level that we do not correct it then it goes deep into us and that becomes like vasana what is the difference between the habit and vasana the habit is something which is uh, not yet percolate into your physiology level but vasanas are already percolate into the physiology level like for example people come to our center of prashanti and uh, you know generally the patients the admissions are there on the friday e- evening very happy looking at the surroundings and they look at nice arrangements and this and that dining hall is there food is there whole program is there and then they are dreaming next day onward the whole program nicely starts and everything is set all right and then they go to bed next morning when they get up first time that they realize oh oh this is a place where there is no coffee or tea where do we get coffee or tea then people say no 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 there is nothing like that you directly have to go to the asana class see coffee has become like a habit tea has become like a habit now you miss it but then after 3 4 days they say wow i never thought that i can live without tea or coffee beautiful and first resolution comes up at that time saying that once i go back home i'm giving up coffee or tea but then anyway how many people give it that's a different issue but some people that has gone deep into their system and after 5 6 5 6 days they come to me and complain the guram ji everything is nice you guys also fine everything is good but i am constipated i said why are you constipated you know because that morning there is no chai i am habituated to the chai if i don't have chai then i don't have bubble moment are did your mother carry breast full of chai for you when you are born is it not something which is acquired later on so what is acquired later on is a habit but then it has percolated into your physiology to become vasana when you do not correct at the vasana level it percolates deep into our system to become samskara all these things percolate into that's what is genetic level it percolates into but one positive note about all these things is that an incident is something we can just face it and leave it a habit is something we can reverse it how many habits did not reverse in our lifetime if habit can be reversed by working consciously against it vasana can also be reversed for a longer period of time when you work not only that even samskaras can be reversed this is what is the way that yoga is not just only if you practice this but it is something which will see that it will remove all the unwanted samskaras from your system you consciously do it and then go back to the health which is supposed to be a total personality level in fact when you look at all these things your anger your hatred your fear your jealousy 
all these things can be your sicknesses at mental level emotional level at intellectual level all those things and yoga will help you to see that you cross over all those things so the way that indian philosophy looks at is that these are the two different types of problems that we have one is called as adija and the other is anadija adi means deep inner disharmony that we have at chitta level and that disharmony percolates into physiology ja means born out of born out of adhi and na adija is anadija which is not because of things that are there from inside but it is because of the external and then this is what yoga vasishta says that they percolate our system and then they damage our system suppress our immunity and then the glands get affected all these things are there and especially it weakens our mind mental power patanjali gives very clearly in his sutra a vyadhi can really affect your mind so what is the way that we need to remove whatever that is external disciplines and also internal discipline external correction that we do how beautifully shastra puts it is shaka vilavanam kurvan mulakaya parokvat you want to fell a tree you cut the branches and then go to the root and then cutting the branches is what we are doing in the lifestyle management you are trying to bring in what all the things which can cause sickness to you we avoid all those things but deep inside you try to remove the vasanas samskaras that are there inside by practicing of asana pranayama meditation and all these techniques of jnana yoga and bhakti yoga so all these things will help us to see that how we can come back to our natural state which is supposed to be health so therefore yoga is not a rope trick yoga is not a physical acrobatic it's something which is a total science of holistic living and going back to our nature a technique to calm down the mind and it's a state of equanimity a state of harmony a conscious process of homecoming this last question last point is very important because often this question comes up if my nature is supposed to be relaxed slow calm peaceful like every child is there like that i was also like that but how did we come out of it why did we come out of it in fact whenever you look at the child how beautiful innocently the child is playing is how i wish that he continues to be like that remember that your grandfather also wanted you to be like that but we came out of it so therefore what is that which made to come out of it is that we were slow relaxed calm peaceful but we did not know that was a great treasure that was our own nature we are not we have not done work for that it is just naturally that is there with us so whatever that has come without any effort from our side we are ignorant of it we are not conscious of it slowness calmness relaxation was our nature but we don't know that we were not aware of it that's why we let it go what we have not earned we do not know the value of it that's why they say well the parent children do not know the value of the money they spend the money like water the dad will be shouting at the son sunny you are spending the money like water tomorrow when you start earning you will know the value of it because you have not earned you don't know the value of it mulla nasruddin was walking in the forest a robber stopped him on the way showed him a dagger and said take away all the money and jewelry that you have otherwise i take your life mulla replied to him don't touch my money and jewelry they are hard and take my life what i got free of charge so what is that you did not work for you let it go and that's what happened with us tension speed agitations is the way that we have come away from our nature consciously go back to our nature is relaxation slowness come this very important point is <coughs> it is not just relaxation but it's a conscious process of relaxation is what is yoga a conscious process of slowing down is what is called as pranayama a conscious process of calming the mind is meditation your awareness is necessary that's why awareness plus relaxation is yoga awareness plus slowness is what is yoga now look at the way relaxation slowness calmness these are all our nature 
whereas tension speed are not our nature going away from our nature that's why somebody gave a very beautiful definition that yoga is a conscious process of homecoming get back to your nature and this conscious process awareness is very important is a key agent in practice of all these practices of yoga that awareness is what is called as prajna that is the most important thing that we need to do when we understand this way then you see that the healing process is within us healing process is in our hand the sculpture has given for last 10 more than 10000 years a beautiful technology of yoga for us to see that we can go back to our nature with these few ideas i always consider this one particular table is like the key for the understanding about the holistic approach of yoga let's adapt that thank you so much i'll stop it here thank you very much raghuram ji i request you to kindly stop sharing so uh, it's always so easy to get blissed out by your uh, very presentation because of the lucidity with which you share these very complex and very lofty ideas so uh, always after listening to you the thing that comes to mind is that you make it seem so simple and yet uh, anyone who's tried uh, living healthily just with this idea of you know who we are that we are truly anandam you know with that idea mm. finds it so yeah. difficult to actually live it in our real life to bring it into our daily existence yeah. you talked mm. about it a little bit but if i may ask you to try and give us a secret of how do we you know reconnect to that uh, how do we reconnect to that ananda state of ours in a more yeah. uh, living manner love to right. hear you on that uh, life offers us so many situations of ananda in the form of you know you look at the children you look at the animals you look at the nature you look at the sunrise you look at a flower flowering how many different ways that there is ananda around we should not miss that which you just pick up so actually for my uh, therapy participants we don't call it as patient therapy participant we always say uh, those who are anxiety this and that i say that uh, one of the important points of anxiety is that mind becomes negative whenever you are anxious mind tends to become negative so i to give them a simple hint saying that keep a diary every night before going to bed write down five nice things that you have come across that day five nice things anything it can be i say today morning idli was very nice <laughs> just a simple thing it may not be very big uh, kind of a thing so this way when you are trying to write five nice things a day what happens is that throughout the day you are looking for those nice things the mind does not go into the anxiety mode you always keep that your happiness with you the very simple idea of how to maintain that anando brahme divyadana anando aham anandam brahma kam brahma kam brahma that's one thing and second thing is this is what anandam brahma kam brahma kam means basically it is expansiveness so wherever that i tend to become narrowed down because of my own say ideas values or anything immediately recognize and say no i don't have to be narrowed down i can be expansive this is also fine that's also fine if i accept that way you see that all half of our problems are solved by that that's a simple thing thank you very much i think that was a very simple idea that uh, if we can just maintain an expansive consciousness yeah. and very interestingly mm-hmm. the word the sanskrit word for uh, treatment is chikitsa yeah. which means looking for the right consciousness so i think it's right. very beautifully you expounded on that yes thank you yeah, uh, there is a, there's some yeah. very warm appreciation coming for you and uh, i've got a question from anjan nandi ji who saying uh, mm-hmm. thanks giving for your individual personal process healing discourse in the session with examples and he was keen to know to ask you a question how can we integrate yeah. ourselves to avoid other noises around yeah. in the direction of personal healing 
it's a very uh, relevant question yes especially very very today's, relevant especially in today's age where we all have we are we are forced to live together because of the pandemic <laughs> you know, it makes this yeah. question even more pertinent right <laughs> initial stages our uh, scriptures say our sages said that you need to insulate yourself you need to shield yourself select the group of people that you interact with you always seek a satsang and satsang does not mean that somebody is sitting and doing bhajan and all those things it is a kind of sangha group where you are motivated to be positive and and healthy and strong and that person also by being your presence being in the presence of you becomes motivated to be strong and positive this kind of group that we select and go on this is what is satsanga once you have that satsanga then slowly what happens is that satsanga will develop nissanga satsangate nissanga and nirmohatvam then you start becoming uh, you know the your boundary that you create in the form of moha you can come out of that so this is very important in the beginning but later on people are and there are some such people are there in their presence you feel that kind of an expansiveness they are naturally in that state it's a, it's a very beautiful concept saying that we go to in in jain parampara they call it as tirthankara see that's a very beautiful idea we go to the tirtha so that we get purified but there are the people who by spiritual practices they become so pure that where they go where they are that's what is the tirtha so that's why they though they call it as tirthankaras but we have in the culture there are so many people who are that kind of people many times you also feel it may be very insignificant person from the society point of view but you go there and sit with them you feel that peace radiates from him please accept that kind of thing these are the things which will help you to see that you can become positive thank you very much especially that idea of tirthankara uh, with the mm. satsanga person so a uh, lot of appreciation again mukund kurunkar ji is saying that dear agraram ji pranams and many thanks for such a nice talk it was like amrit and i think many <laughs> are healed healed by just listening to your simple uh, insights on such profound yeah. ideas and rajiv bhat ji has a very good question he's saying thanks for an excellent talk sir one question is there absolutely no place for allopathic medical sciences that's medicine surgery etc in an integrated yoga approach there is one thing it's very important about the medical science modern medical sciences the diagnostic techniques and we should also look at the diagnosis techniques in such a way that these diagnostic techniques will be useful for uh, removing the fear that there is something wrong in the system see it's not the question of that you know people try to do something like some diagnostic technique and then they found out there is nothing wrong about it maybe i think i should go to another lab to get tested or another test something else some mri i mean all kinds of things that is there are just to ward off that you don't have any issue major issue that's why these techniques are there so once you take it that way that's what is the most important modern science contribution as i see that that's what is something which is very important and we should make a note of it when we are going ahead with the treatment with the therapy thank uh, you dagram ji thank you once again for this uh, enchanting uh, presentation and talk like anu was saying it make it makes us feel that this path is so simple and easy <laughs> when you actually present it so it was wonderful uh i'm charmed by what you said but i'm equally charmed or more charmed with the mulla nazruddin that you have found where do you find him and he comes with so much of wisdom <laughs> and he is there for every occasion yeah <laughs> so you may want to speak say a little more about mulla nazruddin <laughs> he is supposed to be a sufi mystic saint coming from turkey and uh, there is one by name idri shah he is also a sufi follower from he is a student of uh, mevlana jalaluddin rumi and also hafiz he was they were there and his uh, follower is that 
Idrisha. He collected so many incidents like that, such a way that the most beautiful thing is that he looks to be so stupid, but in that stupidity, he brings out such extraordinary, wonderful wisdom mm. and, and drives the point very strong True. at home. You know, that's the beauty of it. So if you come across that Idris Shah, you can see all kinds of... And then Idris Shah also set this uh, pace for this way that now you can put any story on to Nirmula <laughs> <laughs> So it's... You're now you creating your it. versions of Mullah Nazaruddin. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're so wonderful and they're so powerful <laughs> to bring in the idea that you were sharing. Once it so happened in one of my talks, I said about Musa Mullah Nasruddin's story. And then I said, we were all sitting together in the office and eating the lunch together. And along my friend was also there, Mullah Nasruddin. And I said that, you know, the whole story. Everybody enjoyed that. Everybody got message what I said about that. I mean, that message also very important, saying that, you know, like we opened the lunchbox and then we start eating. And then Mullah also opened the lunchbox and said that, that there is same dal, same roti, same sabji. One day he said, maybe in the morning he ate the same thing and the afternoon lunch also. Second also he said, third day also he said, I said, what is this every day? You want to have a different lunch? You tell your wife. She packs a different lunch for you. That's all we all do. Said you are lucky. What do you mean by you are lucky and you are not lucky? Your wife does not listen to you. He said, no, I'm not married. Are you're not married? Then who packs your lunch box? He said, I pack my lunch box. <laughs> and then he complains about his lunch box. And Mullah, when he says that, we all laugh. But what is our life? Is it not our own? packed lunch box. I want to go to the office in the morning. I complain about the traffic. I work in the under that boss. I select. And then the moment I see the boss face, I said, that the same boss, you know, horrible. Hey, who selected? Who did that? <laughs> so this is what I said. In my group, when I said that, one person from the audience, he came to me and said, Abramji, a story was wonderful about the office and all that. But tell me, who was that colleague of mine? I never heard in my office the name. <laughs> so, so, stories like that. Wonderful. We are yeah. always grateful to Mullah Nazruddin. <laughs> <laughs> and, I think, and I think everybody who's heard you today will never forget their own lunchbox henceforth. <laughs> yeah. and well, we'll be more so careful to pack it. I think we'll all take a little more responsibility to pack it up you know in a more right. tasty manner <laughs> because we have to eat it at the end of the day like you said yes so uh, we are like time unfortunately always runs out much long, uh, much faster than we would like it to when you are presenting to us uh, but there is one, or, I would just like to possibly take one or two more questions if I can. And if you'd like to answer it like a rapid fire question, you could even do that. But so uh, here it is. Uh, <laughs> there's somebody who's saying basically there's a question about attentive. So could you please guide on how to be more attentive? And uh, more attentive. the same question is again asked to intellectual attentivity through yoga, because that would be mental yeah. health. How do you focus if you have some important things yes. to tell? In fact, it's not the question of any uh, particular practice. Every practice of yoga requires your awareness. In fact, normal course of time, our degree of awareness, we really understand that it's hardly about 2 to 3%. Like I come across this kind of thing, a housewife talking to another friend and then takes out the sugar can and then making chai put the sugar in that and put the can back. And then she turns around to her and says that, uh, what did I put the sugar on? Hurry, <laughs> you picked up the pie, bot, bottle and then you put the sugar. No, I picked up the bottle, I remember, but I don't know whether I put the sugar. See, degree of awareness is so slippery. It's just about two to 3%. You know, you will wonder the way that how we don't have that awareness. A lady who was driving me in New Jersey to the yoga center, Yoga center is in the north, her office is in the south. She sat in the car talking to me. She went to her office, which is south, opposite direction. 
And she said, where did we come? I said, you were driving and your city said, I come to my office. That means you drove all the way robotic. So therefore that we don't have awareness. Whereas in asana, when you do it, the teacher will say, breathe in. And who has to do it? You have to do it. Similarly, DRT, deep relaxation technique, lax your toes, who has to do it? You have to do it. So yoga will bring about about 40 to 50% of your awareness. So on an average, even if you do for one or two hours of yoga, on an average in the day's work, your awareness is almost like 14, 15% rather than one or two percent. It's a good gain of yoga. It's not the question of what asanas that you do, what practice of pranayama, but it is that awareness that you gain is something which is profound. And if somebody is unable to focus during meditation in particular, right. that was a question. So how do we, how do we, uh, like is meditation meant for everybody or? No, huh. actually rather than directly going for or trying the meditation, we should involve in japa, we should involve in the in the mala, you know, these are the things because, you know, mala, you are also uttering and also that you are doing with the hand. So that means there are three, four our upakaranas. That means our instrument are involved in that. So very rarely mind slips into some other thought. So therefore, these are all the things which are necessary. Similarly, you take the, you know, uh, Vishnu Sahasranam, Lalta Sahasranam. These are the things where you are chanting one after the other. So your awareness cannot go away. It maintains your awareness. So after all those things, that mind comes to some degree of your uh, ownership, then meditation will help you. Unfortunately, today, there are so many teachers who say, you know, quick uh, 10 minutes meditation, 15 minutes meditation, or five minutes. I mean, there's no quick fix for the mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just uh, last one here, which is about food, the importance of food uh, in yeah. the whole process of achieving our ultimate goal. Paddy Balaji is asking this question. Yeah. One thing, very important thing about the food is that a lot of time, well, a lot of things, what happened that they uh, locally, that particularly in India, there are various food systems that developed out, out of which the systems which are supposed to be sattvic food, which means you know, very simple yardstick for me for the sattvic, rajasic, tamasic is the food you take it for the sake of hunger that you take care of it. After that, you can forget about the stomach, forget about the food and you can go ahead with your work. That means it gives you freedom from the stomach. Whereas you take the food which bothers you for the next couple of two, three hours. That's supposed to be by burning. That's what is rajasic food. People say that whether but yeah, you know, mirch, that is a, a hot pepper, is supposed to be rajasic food. Why? After you take it, next four hours, that your stomach will still, still be burning. Similarly, garlic, if you take it, you smell for the whole day. It's supposed to be rajasic. Tamasic food is that you take it, it will not allow your consciousness to raise up. It goes into slumber. That's what is tamasic food. It's not just only the quality of food, but even quantity of food. I might take a nice, wonderful sattvic food, but the quantity can be a tamasic quantity. <laughs> Let's be avoid that. Yeah, things that are there. General, in general, that is there. And locally, you find out in your own culture. I mean, people say that we, we, we don't have to import one culture to food to the other culture. Like, for example, Gujaratis don't have to adapt to the... Madrasi food, Madrasis don't have to do that because each culture has developed its own wonderful food system in our country. And yes, non-vegetarian is something which can really bother you because for various reasons, try to avoid that. Thank you for that uh, reminder on the kinds of food. Um, uh, Raghuramji, there's one question of a sadhaka who's saying here that what if you are in a place on the path where you bring negativity to a satsanga, how do you seek out a group of people without harming them? Right. Uh, somebody brings about negativity in that group? Yes. Or so you, sometimes uh, uh, on, the path of, on the path of yoga, we have a lot of yeah. inner conflicts 
and we can right. tend to become skeptical or negative and so right. how do we avoid bringing our you know pessimism on the wave sometimes into a uh, satsang and how do we find a group that can elevate us then there is one thing which is very clear in the yoga path it says that udasinata that means to say you should be able to let go neither comment against it nor comment for it yeah it is not something of your cup of tea just leave it pick up what is good and then go ahead with that but if there is so much nonsense that's going on there is nothing good that i can pick up then i could leave that place i don't have to be with that it's my choice it's my choice yes thank you thank you for that i said i'm like this uh, i have heard you now on a couple of occasions and still there is this lobha almost not to let you go <laughs> because there's <it's laughs> <laughs> because it's so much to learn so much and uh, yes under these circumstances it's not always so easy but i'm really tempted to put in one last question here okay. and uh, i'll i'll try and club to questions here and it's by one doc- dr renuka anvekar ji who saying namaste sir excellent talk when you mentioned about ayurveda as a healing modality you mentioned only about the natural substances ayurveda is a science of life but ayurveda is a way of life which will keep us swastha what could be your yeah. comments and i'd like to just combine it with another one because mm-hmm. uh, this is by ajit tiwari ji who says that if you say health is bliss and the person yeah. who can achieve this bliss should never get sick and live forever then right. why do we die <coughs> sorry then why do we die <laughs> death basically is a process of life has got these five stages sir four stages which is supposed to be the birth growth and then you know jayate and all those things that are there and then it has to die go away it is a natural process that's why in ragumsham it says that yoginante tanutyacham that means to say leaving this body is not a struggle it just very smoothly it passes away from this particular body because you use this instrument as long as that you need to use it but once this instrument is not useful anymore why do i want to hang on to this instrument i am free to get into a next beautiful fresh tender instrument and a new circumstances that's what is the perception that we have and death is never a, a negative thing in our culture death is always something which is a welcome kind of a thing and how we have to die is the most important thing <laughs> thank you very much raghuram ji uh, i will have to in the interest of time uh, put a pause button here but for many more continuations after this i hope and uh, i request vinay ji to kindly make the announcements for tomorrow we will uh, we have two more questions to you Raghu, raghuram ji so we'll get back before that i'll quickly make a the announcement for tomorrow yeah uh, kotichi can i request you to kindly present us the poster so tomorrow morning we are starting with a session on karuna sparsha healing touch through compassion this will be led by shri nitish batra ji who is the founder of mindful initiative where he will give us a set of practices and also meditation which involves self compassion based meditation Uh, so this will be a wonderful session especially in this time where compassion is required everywhere and even towards oneself so in that context is a very interesting session and in the evening we have a session on yoga kshema towards sustained wellness using mantra and bhavana mantra and bhavana are two important concepts within yoga which bring about a holistic well being and through again theory philosophy and practice shrimati nritya jagannathan ji who is the director of k krishnamacharya yoga institute's uh, uh, academic wing she will be leading this session and i request all of you to join for both this session this will be really highly enriching sessions and there are also many queries regarding the videos of these sessions all these sessions are being recorded and they will be made available on indica yoga youtube channel so they are there for posterity any time you want to wish any session you might have wished please make use of it by 
visiting these websites. It's on Indica Yoga website. It's also there on uh, Indica Yoga YouTube channel. So please make use of all these resources. And we also have one more request. All these sessions, this entire festival is open for all the seekers. So we request you to kindly circulate this information and bring in as many seekers as possible so that we build a community of seekers who are on the authentic path of yoga. So with this request, I hand it over to Anu once again. Yes. We had, I'd just like to apologize for those few participants who've asked questions, but we were not able to take them. But Raghuramji, Raghuramji is there, is going to be there uh, for a long time with us. So if you have, uh, if people have questions, Raghuramji, could you please tell us how they can reach out to you? So how can they uh, find you and listen to a lot, all of your lectures, etc.? Oh yeah, Raghuram NV. If you could look at that uh, YouTube and I have a lot of lectures there. And also that uh, uh, Facebook, I keep posting my these things. And then that's also Raghuram uh, is the name of this thing. And if personally, people would like to contact me also, the, my phone number 948-215-4705, which is my WhatsApp number, 948-215-4705. People Raghuram, can reach can I ask me? you to repeat your number yeah. once more, please? I'll just put it down slowly. 948 Yes. 215 Yes. 4705 Four seven zero five. Five. Thank and you. People can reach me. I'll be able to. Glad to sh share my ideas to them. Right. And uh, as a parting message for this uh, particular festival, we'd love to hear a message that we can carry away with us and enrich our lives and heal ourselves from within the yogic way. Yeah. Thank you. Two things I would like to say in this context. One is that we, our very nature itself is bliss, happiness. We don't have to injure or disturb anybody else, disturb any nature outside, or go for unnecessary running rat race for the sake of this happiness. See, world is there. World is plenty. But it is for the sake of need, not for greed. Once we understand that, we can create a world which is a beautiful world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raghuramji. Our Sadar Pranams and a big gratitude also for the participants who joined us. So request you to please, as Vinayaji said, please share about the festival to your friends because the topic is such an important one on healing uh, and healing from within. So please do join us again tomorrow and for the days to come. Thank you very much, Raghuramji. Pranam. Thank you. Pranam.